The Denver Broncos have once again been one of the worst teams in the NFL. And despite that, they actually have a pretty good roster on paper. So what do you do when you have an underperforming team with actual decent talent? You usually fire the coach. But the Broncos gave up a lot for Sean Payton, so we can't quite do that. So instead today, we are going to bring back the Extreme Rebuild, where if you haven't seen it on the channel already, we have to trade away every single player with interest from another team. So pretty much this entire team is going to be gone, and we're going to be starting from scratch. And for the return of the Extreme Rebuild, let's see if we can get to 1,500 likes on this video, the usual goal. And if, and only if we hit that, it'll let me know that y'all want to see me bring this back and I'll do another one. So be sure to drop a like if you want to see me destroy another team. <laughs> and let me know down below what team I should do next. Just let me know down below what team you would want to see. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already, because I have been and will continue to post a lot of Madden rebuilds. That is literally all I do. <laughs> so that's enough of that, and let's get into this rebuild. So I'm not going to show every single player we're going to trade away. I'm probably only going to show a few, like the most important ones. So let's get into it, and we will see how many picks we can get. Okay, well, the first trade is a weird one. We're going to be trading. Now, this isn't meant to be a realistic rebuild. I just want to say that. So before anyone says anything, not a realistic rebuild. We are going to be trading Russell Wilson and Ben Powers to the Falcons for Kyle Pitts, Desmond Ritter, a first round pick next year and a fourth round pick this year. What a weird trade. Um, The reason I'm going for Desmond Ritter is because he's actually good in this game a lot of the time. He has been awful in real life. I didn't like when they picked him because I thought he would be okay in the NFL and I thought they would need more than that and I thought Desmond Ritter would be good enough to keep them from like replacing him with an actual like really really good QB but no he's been awful um <laughs> I did not see that coming but he is good in the game so we will see what he can do and if he sucks we'll just draft a QB it won't be hard so we're getting a lot of value here and maybe we'll actually use Kyle Pitts unlike the Falcons and here we're gonna be trading <laughs> Pat Sertain Zach Allen in a third round pick for three firsts in a fifth round pick from the Cardinals. You know, I don't think the Broncos would necessarily mind if they uh blew up the roster. I mean, Broncos fans wouldn't mind that much, but Pat Sertan is probably the one Broncos fans really wouldn't want to trade. But of course, we have to trade him here. And we get like a really good amount of value. Three first round picks. I wanted to trade to a team that had multiple first round picks this year that were projected to be like lower picks. I guess because these are projected two and three they're expensive to get and unless they are two and three then it might not be worth it but well either way it's worth it but I was trying to get multiple first round picks for cheaper ones that were projected to be lower in the draft but the only team was the Bears that had multiple first round picks and they had projected number one and number nine so I couldn't really do that so hopefully the Cardinals and I guess the Texans suck I think that's what those two picks are and we are trading Justin Simmons for two firsts and a second round pick for the Bengals. That's an overpay and a half. I, look, I like Justin Simmons, but to give that up for a safety, this is like the Jamal Adams trade all over again. I mean, at least Justin Simmons has been healthy, but that's a lot to give up for a safety regardless. But we'll take it. I'm not gonna complain. We need all the help we can get. But I'll trade the rest of the original Broncos players that have interest, and we'll see how much draft capital we can get. Okay, well, here... <laughs> Here's the team after we traded everybody away and signed some free agents. It's it's definitely an interesting team. I, I don't think I showed me trading for Steve Avila, but he's like the last player I actually traded for or like included in a trade. But we actually got some decent free agents. The Jets cut Michael Carter for some reason, so I signed him. I mean, I guess that's the only really good free agent we got, but it's not, it's not the greatest team in the world, believe it or not, at a 70 overall. 72 offense, 69 defense defense. Nice. But what is nice, again, I guess, is the amount of draft picks we have. Now, I will say, I feel like I wasn't able to get as many first round picks in this one as I usually am, but we still have a decent amount for sure. L like, we have seven this year, including our own, and then five next year, including our own. So it's definitely not bad. And then we have like a million other picks. So we're looking pretty good there. This should be a team we can build up, assuming we aren't too broke after trading everyone away from 
from Dead Cap and all that. But let's get into the season and let's get to the midseason point of year one and we'll see how this team can do. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> okay, we are one in six at the midseason point of year one. We won the first game of the year, though. I feel like this has been happening to me a lot lately where we just win the first game of the year and then we don't win again. Maybe we win like one or two more in the second half of the year, but we beat the Raiders, which I guess is fitting. And then, you know, we've been close in every game except for the Dolphins one. So we definitely don't deserve to win yet, but <laughs> we we almost have been a decent amount. We're really close to being six and one. Instead, we're one and six, but we already have 37 players to resign. Oh, I guess it's just the free agents, but I thought it normally makes you resign them at the end of the year. Is there anyone I'm even going to want to resign? Maybe Michael Carter and Greedy Williams. Is Greedy Williams even on a practice squad right now? I don't know. Brian Edwards, Jalen Rager, Natani Moody. I don't know. We might resign some of these guys at the end of the year, but like, I, they aren't that important to us. Michael Carter will offer four years, 18 mil, I guess, and he resigns. And then that's all I'm going to do for now. So God damn. All right, let's get to the end of the year and we will see how this team can finish. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, honestly, three and 14 is not bad for this team. We are a 72 overall. I don't know if we should have even had this many wins, but having the greatest coach of all time in Mikey McDingle definitely helps. But we were awful, as you would expect for a team that just got rid of their entire team and basically doesn't have a team. Now, something I'm surprised about is Desmond Ritter wasn't that good. 3,100 yards, 14 touchdowns, 11 picks. That's like the lowest amount of touchdowns I've ever seen in this game. <laughs> At least the picks weren't that bad, but the touchdowns are rough for sure. Now, Leonard Fournette, I probably should have started Jaleel McLaughlin, but it's really hard to develop running backs. So it was like, eh, I'll just sign a good one and see if he can do well. Leonard Fournette, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, but only 3.8 yards per carry. That's not great. Receiving uh, also wasn't great. Brian Edwards was our leading receiver with 872 yards. Kyle Pitts didn't do much. I want to switch to a more tight end heavy scheme, though, if we do have Kyle Pitts. And then the blocking wasn't too bad. I mean, I guess we didn't pass that much, but Steve Avila joins the all castration team. Team, so we'll take it, allowing zero sacks, so it looks like that trade worked out already. And on defense, Brandon Smith led the team with 145 tackles, tackles for loss, 16 for Ronnie Perkins, 14 for Jalen Holmes, I didn't even know I had him, and then sacks, only four for Alton Robinson led the team. And interceptions, three for Grady Williams, two for Brandon Smith, and one for a few players. You know what, low-key, Brandon Smith was kind of nice. He probably played about a million snaps, 1,300, yeah, that's why he he got so many stats, but hey, we'll we'll take the production however we can get it. I definitely won't complain. But yearly awards MVP, of course, goes to Patrick Mahomes. Doesn't hurt that he has to play our team twice a year. Definitely can just pad his stats, but yeah, he's up there. Of course, Russell Wilson on the Falcons is up there at number five. No Broncos up there. Couldn't imagine why. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor. No Broncos. Shocking. Defensive player of the year goes to a former Bronco in Von Miller, because of course it does. No Broncos. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Zay Flowers. Oh, I was going to say, I'm surprised we don't see Jalen Cropper up here, but he's at number five. I guess we'll take that. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tyree Wilson. Not doing that in real life. JL Skinner at number four. I didn't even know if he did anything or not. And Darius Rush at number 10. What did JL Skinner do? 110 tackles. Okay. Two tackles for loss and a pick. Also eight pass deflections. That's not bad. I mean, he played 1,300 snaps, so I would hope you could put up good stats in that amount of time, but you never know. Our offense is just terrible, though. I'm just going to switch the playbook year one. I mean, it makes sense why it was bad, but even if you have a bad overall offense, even worse than this, it's not as bad as it was here, so we're going to change it. But now, let's get into the offseason and we'll see what we can do. Oh, God. Okay, well, we created a Super Bowl champion year one. The Falcons take down the Chiefs 28-21. Of course that would happen. Why wouldn't it happen? Did we only trade him Russ? Or no, we traded him Ben Powers, right? Yeah, Ben Powers and Russell Wilson. <laughs> and that's enough to win him a Super Bowl. Which, hey, if they got a QB, I mean, this is a nice roster. We did take Kyle Pitts from them, though. But it's not like they use him anyways. Why do they have Jamie Collins? Didn't he retire? I must have forgot to retire him. Oh, well. I mean, shit, if this team had a good QB, they could be really nice. And I mean, Desmond Ritter's been okay the last couple weeks. So maybe they'll start getting better. I have no idea. He wasn't very good for us here. <laughs> 
but I'm happy we could create a Super Bowl champion with the players we traded to that team. That feels great. Now, for the players we have to re-sign, we can't re-sign anybody. We are broke. I do want Brandon Smith back, though, but I mean, there's not much I can do about that. This is definitely gonna be a draft rebuild early on, at least, until more cap clears up, but it's not like we're losing a crazy amount here. Just our entire team, but like, we don't have any good players. I do want Brandon Smith back, but oh well. Maybe we can get him back at some point. We'll pick up the fifth year for Kyle Pitts so we don't have to re-sign him just in case we are still broke next year. It says we have 177 in available cap. Maybe we will once we hit the off season. Is that how it works? I don't know. So maybe we will be able to do something in free agency. Let's see. Okay, yeah, now we have cap space and there are some decent players here. Definitely some of the usual suspects, but definitely some good players. Unfortunately, almost none of them are interested in us at all. <laughs> so that's great. Okay, well, these are the players we're gonna go for in free agency. Not exactly all of them I wanted, but some good ones either way. I actually... We're only going for two linemen, and we only have, like, two linemen on the roster. I might go for one more, actually. Okay, now we are gonna go for Christian Wilkins, which would be a big addition. I also wanted a pure edge rusher, but Josh Allen, we can't get. There's a team with five bars of interest, and we he's not interested in joining the team at all. And Josh Uche normally sucks in this game, so I'm not gonna go for him. <laughs> he had, like, three and a half sacks last year. I'm good. He hasn't been, like, great in real life this year, but he was a amazing last year in the limited opportunities he got. But anyways, we're also going for Damian Harris. He was, he had like almost 1,400 yards last year. He got superstar dev, so we'll try to get him. Connor Williams, we might play him at like tackle or something. I mean, he has tackle experience. He's not quite as good there as he is at center, but I mean, he's not very good at center in this game, so we'll see what he can do at tackle. And then we're also going for Gabe Davis. I wanted another receiver, but that can just be something we worry about later. You know what? What if we actually go for Darnell Mooney too? Well, he's not going to develop much and the Lions are interested. Never mind. We'll just go for Gabe Davis for now. Next year, we'll definitely do more in free agency if there are better players, but we're also going to go for Jeff Okuda just so we have somebody at corner. Cesar Ruiz, I don't know if we're going to get him because the Lions and Raiders are also interested, but Nick Harris, Javon Kinlaw, and we'll try to bring Brandon Smith back. So let's see if we can sign any of these players and a good amount of them do sign, but who do we we get. It looks like all of them except for Caesar Ruiz, which is fine. <laughs> it would have been nice because he did have that star dev, but yeah, he goes to the Raiders. You know, honestly, I can find linemen in the draft decently well. I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> but Gabe Davis, Jeff Okuda, and Brandon Smith have still yet to sign, so let's see if they want to now. Everyone except Jeff Okuda does, and we get both of them. So Jeff Okuda, do you want to sign now? Okay, <laughs> finally. So this is a decent little free agent class for sure. Sure. And we got almost all the players we wanted, pretty much all the important ones. And we definitely still have a lot of holes on the roster, to say the least. But it's looking pretty good. Where is... Oh, did we not get Connor Williams? Oh, we didn't get... Con... Wait, where did he go? To the fucking tag... We had like a five bar offer and they had like a three or maybe a four. I don't know. Okay, well, how is Jonah Williams in this game? We'll go for a different Williams maybe. Oh, he was really good last year. I'm sure he won't play the same here, but he was good last year. <laughs> So now we'll see if we can get him. Oh, I can't submit any more offers. I'm assuming we'll get him. So now with that, let's get to the draft. Okay, well, in the draft, we have the number one and number two overall picks. Whose pick is this? It's the Cardinals. Okay, and then the Texans finished about mid. Honestly, a lot of our picks weren't great, but we do at least have the top two picks in the draft. So I won't complain about that. I wish I focused scouted QB because I didn't think Desmond Ritter would suck. We might have to give him another chance though because Rich Payne which is a great name he doesn't look well he, he looks decent his throw power isn't that good though he looks all right though we might take him towards like the back half of the first round but who do I want to go with at number one overall Ooh, we might go with Trent Vinson there are a lot of tackles available here at the top but yeah Trent Vinson does look like the best the best one available elite strength an A or a B for almost everything almost everything is an A he has one B and 
one D, unfortunately, but everything else is really good. He might have normal dev, honestly. <laughs> What's his injury? B injury, eh, but he has lax discipline, which isn't great, but I still think he'll be a good overall. He's from Washington State, too, and he's left-handed, just like me for real. He's 6'7", 323. He is 23 years old, but, I mean, a, a tackle isn't the most exciting number one overall pick, but he does look really good. So let's take him here, and he does have hidden dev. I don't know if I would call 92 strength elite. I would call that great, but, I mean, he still looks like a good player. We're in number 69, too. He'll probably be like a 78 overall or something. We'll see. But now I don't know who, I don't know who to take at number two overall. There are some corners, but they don't look great, unless Ingram is really fast. Eh, I mean, he is quick, but not super fast. He doesn't look great. Same with Tyree, Tyree Gay. What a name. Again, <laughs> he maybe looks a little better, but I don't know what his zone coverage is. What, what's he listed as? Okay, he is listed as a zone corner, so it's probably B zone. I don't know. The corners don't look very good here. Honestly, we might trade down because the top is only corners that don't look great and then tackles. So trading down sucks in this game, but we'll see if we have any decent offers. Yeah, see, why would I trade down from two to 26 for only two extra first round picks? Like, no, not even a first round pick to move down to nine? Bruh. Maybe we just have to keep this pick and Unless I can work something out. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. I forgot. Um, okay, this doesn't feel great, but we're getting number four and number seven, I think it is, from the Bears. And a second and a third for our pick, two fifths, a fourth, and a seventh. That works. I'm not too worried about those picks we had to add in. I mean, I don't know what we would have gotten anyways. We didn't move down as much as I would like, but we at least got some value, so I'm happy with it. Was it number four and yeah, four and seven? So that's pretty good. That actually didn't feel like too bad of a trade. It's not great, but could have been worse. Whoa, did one of the defensive ends go really early? Oh, they must have been like the sixth projected overall pick or something. Is that who just went? Or yeah, Latavius St. Clair. I was thinking about picking him because he was like the only pass rusher that looked good. Actually, I never looked at Enrique Jackson, but I'm just assuming he won't be good. No. Oh, no. Okay, well, that's tough. Jeffrey Morrow doesn't look great. He would probably be like a 72 or something. I don't know. I'll look around and we'll see what we can do here because I'm not sure. Okay, this works. That's fine. We get the ninth overall pick from the Vikings, a one next year and a two this year to move down. So I'm just taking whatever we can get at this point because I don't know what to do here <laughs> and I'm bad with early picks anyways. This Tommy Murray guy actually looks good. I mean, looking at his ratings right there, C catch in traffic, D catching, F deep route, that looks awful, but he has B awareness, good running stats. Ah, his carrying isn't that good, but B spec catch B medium route. Maybe he isn't great, but I'm always surprised by how good playmaker receivers are. I don't know if I want to risk that this early though. Maybe later in the draft because it is decently easy to find those type of players later. Whoa, a D <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, he's 6'2", 232. This Danny McKee guy. I was like a deep threat with 22 bench reps. This guy's interesting. I kind of like him. He looks good. How the hell? How do you have A catching, but you have need to work on concentration drops like that doesn't make any sense whatever none of these receivers are like blowing me away though even though we do need one we might just go with Tyree Gay because I don't know what else to do here he just doesn't look that good though okay fuck it we are gonna go oh no he's gone too okay let's just go with Tommy Murray he looks good enough the catching isn't great but I just usually have faith in playmaker receivers we'll see if this breaks that faith yes it does normal dev <laughs> shit wearing number 26 Ugh, gross. Okay, now at number nine, let's not do that again. I just don't see any great looking players in this class that aren't tackles. It's only tackles. All right, well, let's go with Jermaine Elliott here. He looks like a solid corner, doesn't have the best awareness in the world or play rec, but he ran a 4-3-7, has great speed. He probably has A man coverage. It, it's at least a B because he has B zone coverage. I think he'll have normal dev, but I think he'll be a good overall, so let's take him. Okay, no. All I need to do is say the player's gonna have normal dev and they'll have hidden. Technically a bit of a reach because he wasn't supposed to go until like the late first, but he looks good, so we'll take him. I don't know how many picks I'm gonna show, but I guess we'll just go until I don't feel like I can take anyone else. <laughs> until this game breaks my spirit. I don't know. Trent Patterson's interesting. He's the, or no, he's not the big one, but he looks interesting. A deep route and spec catch B release. Not the best route runner outside of deep threat though. Deep route running. Does have elite speed. I don't know. I feel like I can get guys like him later. I just don't know how to draft receivers.
receivers. I used to, but I feel like they changed them up a lot. Oh, what? This dude ran a 4-2-4, and that's only second in the class? Who was first? Oh, God. Sometimes you can go through this whole thing, and there just won't be a faster one. Someone was telling me in the comments, like, oh, they must have already gotten taken. It, like, updates, I've seen, after other players get taken. Plus, I saw every top receiver in this class. There wasn't one faster than that. So, no, it just straight up lies. <laughs> Kyrie Alford looks decent. I mean, he looks... Those are some pretty good ratings, but his combine wasn't that good. Although we do really need pass rush, and he's like the best looking one. So let's go with Kyrie Alford, whether it's a reach or not. I don't care. Fuck. <laughs> Normal dev, again, we are getting unlucky with the dev traits, but it is what it is. Ooh, this safety looks really good. Tyler Ingles? Mmm, maybe. I don't know, actually. Maybe not. I just know sometimes there are like really high overall safeties, and I'm trying to look for one of them, even though we don't really need safety. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's go with Tyler Ingles. I know he's gonna have normal dev, but let's take him. He does have normal dev. <laughs> he looked like a good player, though. And let's go with another normal dev player in Danny McKee. <laughs> good speed, good strength, obviously. This is the crazy looking receiver, 6'2", 232, with good speed. Does have good spec catch and catching. If he was slow, I would definitely stay away from him, but yeah, he has the concentration drops and bad injury, but let's take him. <laughs> okay, no, he has nor- I, I don't know how- dev trait works in this game anymore. If they have both concentration drops and injury, like bad injury, it means they'll have hidden. If they have one, it means they will have normal. If they have neither, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but people get like genuinely upset at me in the comments because like I pick normal dev players sometimes. It's a fucking video game, bruh. <laughs> Who cares? I build a good overall team anyways, and it'll still just lose in the wild card. So even if I picked well, it doesn't matter. But I think this is the last pick I'm gonna show, and we are gonna go for Rich Payne. We are gonna take the QB. He looks fine. I mean, he's the only first-round projected guy. None of the others look good unless Tremaine Thomas looks decent. Ugh, no. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> let's go with Rich Payne out of Wake Forest. Sure. Okay, it does have hidden dev, thankfully. It feels like they give a lot of first-round QBs hidden dev, which I, I appreciate. As long as they look like decent prospects, they give them a good dev trait, but he has really nice stats. 90 throw power, 84 speed, 90 change of direction, 90 excel. I definitely like that. He looks like a good player, but I'll take a lot more picks, obviously. Probably all of our second rounds, too, or at least most of them, until I just have no idea who to take, and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well, we had an interesting draft. It wasn't bad, if you ignore the Tommy Murray pick. Um, <laughs> Trent Vinson is really good at a 79 overall obviously has hidden dev, was probably the best player in the class. I don't know, maybe there was a random, like, something. No, he was the best player in the class, so maybe I should have gone with a stronger draft class for sure. I will next year, but I mean, it's not like it's an unfair thing for us. I mean, every team has to deal with a weaker draft class, so, you know, it's fine. Yeah, there just was really nobody in this class outside of Vincent, so we did make the right number one overall pick. It looks like Perry Barrington, someone I was thinking about taking. Oh, he only has normal. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say maybe I should have, but yeah, he doesn't look great. Jermaine Elliott, even though he... Oh no, he is hidden. Wait, he's a really good player actually. Tied for the second best player in the class, and we got him at number nine, so we did well. Even the Tommy Murray pick doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look great. I just wish he had a dev trait. Also, I am changing his number. I hate receivers that wear numbers in the 20s. Sky Moore, uh, Rashid Shahid, fuck both of them. Let's make him number 11. Isn't that like trend in holidays number. <laughs> That's what that makes me think of. But yeah, Murray's whatever. Elliot's good. And then Kari Alford is, I just wish he had a dev trait, but he looks okay. We'll obviously play him at outside linebacker. Where he is a 73, I thought he would go down more than that. That's not terrible, but our pass rush still is probably going to be a problem. Ingles is only a 76. McKee's only a 73. And Rich Payne's only a 69. At least he has the dev trait wearing number zero. You know what? Sure, that's cool. Fuck it. I mean, he was probably our best option for QB. I I didn't know what else to do. And then Taj Gore or Ty Gore. I don't know how you say that. He was a projected top five player. I just picked him 
because he was and he had good strength. Matthew Curtis actually looks really good though. He was the like 4-2-4 speed receiver, which I don't know how that isn't 99 speed. That's why I hate how the combine numbers work in this game. It feels like 4-2-4 speed all the way through like 4-3-3 speed can be like 97 speed, which I just don't like. I mean, I know I don't need anyone to explain to me that the traits or it like says elite speed and all that shit. I already know, but I still don't like it. <laughs> but he looks like a really good player. And I think I made every pick down to like, I think Greg Tennant was the last one or no, Henry Borum. I thought Henry Borum would look or would be better. He had like decent ratings. Oh, he has no pass rush moves. That's why. And terrible awareness. Okay, never mind. But we did pretty well. The CPU did absolutely nothing. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, we did decently well, all things considered. So now let's get into year number two of the rebuild and we'll see what we can do. But here's a look at the team heading into year two of the rebuild. We're looking pretty good. Up, I mean, we're back up to where we were at a 78 overall. And we're obviously a lot younger now, mostly made up of rookies, or at least, yeah, I guess mostly made up of rookies. And we are gonna start Rich Payne, even though he is a lower overall than Desmond Ritter. I just Desmond Ritter was terrible last year. So we'll try Rich Payne. Hopefully he does better. But I mean, y'all have seen me take these players and sign them. I'm not gonna go through all of them because literally all these players are new except for, I guess, Kyle Pitts and Steve Avila. And then here is the defense. Ronnie Perkins got star dev, which is interesting. I guess we'll take that. I don't know how much he's gonna develop still, but we'll take it. We do really still need D-line though. I mean, we do have Christian Wilkins, but that's about it. So that'll definitely be a position we'll have to look at. And then the corner group is looking really good too. I might make Elliot the number one just to try to develop him more. We'll see. But I really like how we're looking. So with that, let's get to the midseason point of year two. I don't know how we're going to do wins wise, but I think we should develop. So let's get to the midseason point and we'll just see what happens. Okay, well, unfortunately, we are once again one and six. I thought we would be a lot better this year. I'm not going to lie, but Madden simulation moment. I guess we probably don't have the best team in the world. Although, ooh, okay. Rich Payne only has star dev, which isn't great, but Vincent and Curtis both have superstars. So we will take that. I don't know what McKee's dev trait is yet. It's close to getting revealed though, but I'm definitely happy about a couple superstar devs on offense, on defense, none. We, oh my God, all of them have normal or er, star. Harvin, Woodbury, Elliot, Burgess all have star, unfortunately, but it is what it is. So our defense is probably going to need some work throughout the rebuild, but our offense is looking good. How is Payne doing though? I'm guessing because we're not doing well, he's not doing great unless like, I don't know, our whole defense is doing terrible. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Rich Payne is not doing well. Eight touchdowns, 10 picks. Ooh. Damian Harris is doing well. The blocking is fine. It's actually really good. What the hell? Only nine sacks allowed. Hasn't Sam Howell taken like 40 in real life through this many games? The most right now is only 18 from Daniel Jones. He's doing awful though. Just kind of how he is in real life. Almost like they shouldn't have paid him 40 mil a year, but I don't know. We might think of a playbook change already. <laughs> Did I last year? I can't even remember. I, I recorded that last night. I was tired as fuck. So, okay, no, we're running Sean Payton, Sean Payton. Maybe that isn't the strat. We'll just go with the good old fashioned Actually, what's a good 3-4 playbook? I don't even know anymore. I used to run Tampa Bay. I It's probably not good anymore, but we'll try it for this year. And then we'll go Chiefs offense. But we have some re-signings to worry about here, surprisingly. Ronnie Perkins and Caden Stearns, I guess, but everyone else is pretty much just depth. Ronnie Perkins did get star dev and he's not that expensive, but he's not interested, so I don't know. And he has zero sacks so far, so I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm good. Caden Stearns isn't very expensive expensive three years, 13 mil. He resigns and that's all we're going to do here because these are just a bunch of backups. So now let's get to the end of year two and hopefully we can do better than we did in the first half of the year and last year, but you never know. Okay. Well, not a great start to the rebuild. We are one, one win better than last year, at least at four and 13. Ugh. Rich Payne. Oh my God. 3,400 yards, 19 touchdowns, 25 interceptions. Yeah. He's getting traded. Uh, so is 
Desmond Ritter in the offseason. Damian Harris was solid, just we didn't rush a whole lot. 997 yards, 10 touchdowns, 4.3 per carry. Did we switch to the Chiefs offense or not? Because only 877 yards for Kyle Pitts was the most on the team. 793 for McKee, 757 for Gabe Davis, only 600 for Matthew Curtis. He's the one I wanted to get touches too. Pause. Uh, Jonah Williams sucked. Trent Vinson was fine. Taj Gore sucked. Nick Harris was fine. Both Avila and Harris were good actually. And then Marcus Harvin led the team in tackles with 139. Tackles for loss, 11 from Christian Wilkins. Oh my god, 18 from Ronnie Perkins, but zero sacks. That's great. And sacks, 11 for Christian Wilkins. I'm glad we signed him because Kari Alford or Kyrie Alford was second with only three. <laughs> hmm. I think we have some clear issues on this team. And oh my god, interceptions, three for Marcus Harvin. Again, I'm glad we had him because we had one from Kyrie Alford, a pass rusher, and one from Jail Skinner, and that's it. None for any corners, none from any off-ball linebackers except Harvin, I guess. Well, I guess he counts. Not great. Not a great year. Um... <laughs> Patrick Mahomes wins MVP, who would have guessed? Offensive player of the year goes to Patrick Mahomes, who would have guessed? Top three are Chiefs, of course. Defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt. Christian Wilkins at six. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Kendrick Thurman for the Browns. We can't even get offensive rookie of the year having that many rookies because they all played like shit. And defensive, God, we can't even get defensive. It goes to Tashawn Wheaton on the Colts. Marcus Harvin at two. Few more Broncos up there. That sucks. This was a terrible season. Damn. <laughs> on the bright side though, we of course have a lot more first round picks this year. We don't have number one, but we have number three. Really? We were four and 13 and that's only number three. I That's a good pick, but I'm surprised. We have number four, number eight, a good amount of picks. We'll take it. We just really need a QB again, apparently. So let's get into the off season and we'll once again see what we can do. Oh, what a Super Bowl. The Jags beat the Panthers 21 to 17. I don't even want to talk about that one. <laughs> that's just stupid. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, the Jags are good in real life, not the Panthers. I don't think Jags are quite Super Bowl level though, but maybe next year, I guess. But for the rest of the players we have to re-sign, we're not gonna bring anybody back, obviously. So hopefully there's some good free agents this year, specifically pass rushers. Maybe a QB, but I uh, I don't know what QB would be available. Okay, there definitely are some good players, some old good players, but at least good players. Bro, look at Hassan Reddick's numbers for real life compared to Madden. This game sucks. This game is so bad. <laughs> he has like two total sacks. Hold on, that's actually insane. He has two total sacks for the last two years. He had 16 this last year in real life. I love this game. There are actually a ton of free agents here. Like, every team must be broke right now. It feels like no teams were able to re-sign their players. But these are the players we're gonna go for. I mean, there are a lot of players available, but apparently the Texans aren't broke because everyone I'm trying to go for, the Texans have like a level five offer for them. Like, I wanted Aaron Donald. The Texans have a level five. I wanted, I think it was Zadarius Smith. I'm pretty sure the Texans had a level five offer there. The, they wanted Jamal Adams. Same deal. Like, I don't know. Apparently, they just have a ton of money. But we are gonna go for Deontay Johnson, Khalil Mack, and Joe Tryon. I don't think we're gonna get Deontay Johnson. Honestly, we might not get any of these three. I mean, well, we might get Mack and Joe Tryon, actually, but I really don't think we're gonna get Deontay Johnson. We can try, and I do want him, but, like, I... The Panthers were in the Super Bowl. I think he would want to go there. I guess you never know, though. And then I'm going for Khalil Mack because he's usually really good in this game. I'm sure he won't be this rebuild. And then Joe Tryon was decent last year. He had, like, eight sacks, like, 17 tackles for loss, and he got superstar dev. So we'll see if we can continue to develop him. But let's see if any of these players want to sign. They all sign, or they both sign except Mac and Joe Tryon signs but of course no Deontay Johnson who would have guessed so let's see if we can sign Khalil Mack now and it looks like he does sign so we at least help our pass rush out a little bit which was one of our main problems obviously so that should theoretically make our defense a little better we'll see oh also Christian Wilkins got x-factor we'll take that and I'm gonna work on a trade because I already don't want to deal with Rich Payne even though his name is funny all right well this kind of feels like a lot of 
value to give up. But we're going to trade Rich Payne, Enrique Jackson, a second round pick, which is almost a first. It's number 34 overall and a seventh round pick for Chris Godwin. We're giving him a starting quarterback and almost a first round pick for a receiver. Don't know if I love that trade for us, but I definitely did want a receiver. So we will take it. So now I think we're done with free agency and let's get to the draft. I just hope there's a good QB, but you never know. Okay, well in the draft, I thought we had the third overall pick for some reason, but we have number two. I don't know how I forgot that already. Wait, I swore we had number three. I remember thinking it's weird we only have number three, even though we were three and 14. Was that before it was decided? Did I check that at like the midseason? I'm probably just stupid and saw it wrong. I, I don't know, dude. But the Saints at number one overall, they go with the quarterback I wanted. That's tough. The other two first round quarterbacks suck. Cool. Um, looks like we still have a QB problem. Problem then we once again might be trading down here cuz it's a lot of pass rushers which we already got two that will hopefully be good and none of these guys look crazy and then a bunch of tackles which I guess could be a problem depending on how Jonah Williams keeps playing but yeah there just isn't really a lot for us here so let's trade this down I'm almost half tempted to just simulate this draft cuz I don't know what to do here <laughs> I'm gonna be honest okay we'll take it we get a first next year a couple seconds a third it's not great value but we're trying trading down to seven. It's better than what we were getting offered, so I'm fine with it. It's solid value, I guess. Alfonso Bethel is interesting. He's a really fast tackle, but we just don't need tackle. <laughs> Romeo Douglas is someone I was thinking about, but I'm concerned that he's a speed rusher with only 479 speed. That doesn't seem great. His ratings do look good. He, he looks solid. Yeah, we'll just go with Romeo Douglas because I don't know what else to do. He has, he has struggles to find the ball in the air. Oh, no, like that's not that big of a deal. Everything else looks good. What's his injury? Good. So he's going to have normal dev. <laughs> Let's take him. Okay, no, he doesn't have normal dev. 80 speed, that's not bad. 88 excels pretty good. 82 strength. We'll take it. He looks like a good player. He might be a backup year one. We might get him playing time. I guess we'll see how we feel about Joe Tryon. Sal Esparza also looks decent. Hmm, we might think about him. And then this guy is the best quarterback available. You know, ooh, well still, if I didn't know any better. I would think he's good. He has elite throw power, really good strength, good enough speed. I mean, that's a decent speed for sure. And like good passing stats other than throw on the run and his awareness isn't great, but he doesn't look bad at all. Once we get to like the end of the first, I'll probably take him there. Even though it is technically a reach, I mean, I want a QB. If not, we'll just give Desmond Ritter another shot because I know he's normally good in this game, but just definitely wasn't year one. But I can't really blame him necessarily because the whole team sucked. I don't know. Also, Andrew Lane looks really good. We just don't need corner. <laughs> okay, let's just go with Sal Esparza. I mean, pass rush was a really big issue for us both of the first two years or each of the first two years. Sal Esparza isn't very quick, but he has really good tackle, good hit power for whatever that's worth. Hopefully a power moves. Not the fastest in the world, but good enough strength. We'll take him. Hidden dev again, 78 speed. That's not great, but 80 strength is solid. 85 excel. He also looks pretty good. He'll probably only be like a 72, 74 overall somewhere around there and still picking in the top 10 here <laughs> I forgot how many picks we have still I really want a D lineman but there just aren't any there were a lot of pass rushers this year but no three four D linemen like at all I see one Jose something oh and Leonard Strickland I didn't see him Ooh, Demar Lawson this guy looks good yeah I think we'll go with him Jose Macklin's really athletic though really good strength and really good speed this is actually kind of tough Leonard Strickland uh, he's probably okay but I like the other guys more. Yeah, let's go with Damar Lawson. A power moves, B finesse moves, A tackle, possibly A pursuit, good combine. We might honestly go with him and Jose Macklin because we do need two D linemen. But let's go with Lawson because I think he's slightly better first. Oh, he has normal dev. Really? Okay, well, <laughs> that sucks, but hopefully the other guy is not normal dev, but now that I say that, he will be. There goes Andrew Lamb, the corner that looked good, but oh well. Corner isn't very hard to find in this game. And let's go with... No, Strickland isn't the good one. It is Jose Macklin out of Oklahoma. I I hope he has not normal dev. I hope he is hidden, but you never know. He has good injury. All of his traits look good or his player notes. So let's take him. He has hidden, thankfully. 92 strength, 75 speed, 82 excel, 69 agility. Nice. I would bet that the other guy's a higher overall, maybe, but this guy looks 
probably better because of the dev trait. So either way, I think we got two good D linemen. Ooh, the safety. Amari Valentine. B awareness, A man coverage, B tackle. I, he's not very scouted, but good speed. I always get baited by safeties. They always have normal dev when I take them. But let's go with Amari Valentine out of Utah. Okay, he has hidden dev, thankfully. 92 speed. I like the man coverage though. That's nice. Normally, if there is a safety with a man coverage, they do look terrible and everything else, but he looked good and he was fast, which is kind of rare for safeties in this game. So he might be a good player. And I guess we could maybe use a third corner. Terrell Chase on. What's his speed? This guy looks good. What's his injury? Not good. Okay. And he lacks discipline. So what did I learn? If it's two negatives, it can be, it can be hidden. I don't know if it always is though. If it's like one negative, one positive, it's normal. If it's two positive, it's usually hidden. I don't know. It's confusing. Corners a lot of the time past like the early first do have normal though so I would guess Chase on does have normal but 6'3", 185 he's built like a twig out of FAU elite agility and acceleration that's nice and then just looks really well rounded. Let's take him. Okay no he is hidden. I don't know how this game works. Well no I did say bad injury and then he had one bad trait the lax discipline. The two negatives equals a positive for some reason so <laughs> we'll take Terrell Chase on. 91 speed, 94 excel, 94 change of direction. I also didn't juice the draft classes just because I don't like to sometimes, but he looks like a really good player. I would bet that he's one of the better corners or one of the better players in the class in general. There goes Alex Ford. Oh, well, that's fine. The QBs look like shit anyways. Oh, Matthew Green is interesting. He's a playmaker with 424 speed. He has terrible strength though, which is weird for a playmaker. I mean, they should be able to break tackles. He has terrible break tackle, really good deep route running, good ball carrier vision and carrying. What is this player? He's, I feel like I've seen someone like him before. He's just confusing though. And we don't need receiver. We have like seven good ones. We're, I mean, he looks good, but we're not going to take him. So I might make a few more picks, but I will see y'all for the draft recap. I think we're done here. Okay. Well, uh, this draft wasn't as good as I thought it was. Well, it kind of was and it kind of wasn't. I thought Douglas and Esparza would be right around a 74 and I'm happy with that. These two are hopefully the future. At least one of them. I don't know. I hope. They look really similar looking at their ratings. Just one's a power guy, one's a speed guy. And then the defensive tackles are not as good as I thought they would be. DeMar Lawson, it did go up to a 74 at defensive end. He was a 73 defensive tackle. So I was right. He was a slightly higher over overall than Macklin. Macklin's only a 72. I'm really surprised about that. Didn't he have like, uh, I don't know. No, he wasn't the one with A and B power and finesse moves. That was Lawson, which it, it is a, it is 80 power moves, 69 finesse moves. Nice. That's definitely not bad. Just unfortunately normal dev. And then Amari Valentine isn't as good as I thought he would be. Only a 75. I almost wonder if we should play him at corner. <laughs> nah, we did draft a corner. We could trade, not Mike Hughes, the Falcons corner we signed got drafted by the Lions. What's his name? I can't think of his name. Whatever. We could trade him away and go with like Valentine in the slot and then Chase on and then one of our rookies last year is the top two. Which speaking of Chase on, he is a 76. I thought he would be like a 78. I'm not gonna lie, but he looks good either way. And then I took every pick to, I think Harris was the last one. I or, mm, It might have been Bowie, but I took a ton of D linemen. Uh, we took Drummond and Childress on the O-line, both of them look good. Both of them had hidden dev. Sean Hadley, another D lineman. 73 overall, only normal dev, unfortunately, but he looks good. Isaiah Kent, 72 overall defensive tackle. Again, normal dev, but he looks good. He has like 97 strength. And I did take Matthew Green in the third round, only 69 overall and only normal dev, but he has 99 speed, which is interesting. I'm surprised he doesn't have a dev trait, but I'm glad I didn't take him in like the first round. And then Keith Bowie, 72 overall D lineman. He does have hidden. No pass rush to him, but good run defender. <laughs> and then Don Harris. I don't remember if I picked him or not. He has hidden, so we will say I picked him. We'll go with that. I, I might have. I don't know. And then the CPU took a good tight end, Javon Poe. I was thinking about taking him, but I didn't like his route running, but apparently it didn't matter because he looks like a good player. 73 with hidden. And then the CPU picked absolutely nothing through the rest of the draft, so that's cool. So still no QB, but hopefully Desmond Ritter can do well enough. We'll see. <laughs> but now, let's get into 
year number three, the rebuild. Okay, and we're gonna trade Jeff Okuda to the Texans for a first round pick. Don't know how realistic that is, but again, not a realistic rebuild, so <laughs> we'll take it. And now I guess we will move someone to corner. I don't know which safety we're gonna move to corner. Whichever one's the highest overall, so I'll figure that out. Okay, well, here's a look at the team heading into year number three, and we're looking really good. Up to an 81, which isn't like the best in the world, but we basically didn't have a team two years ago, so it's not too bad. We're gonna give Desmond Ritter another shot. I mean, maybe he can do well this year. I don't know. I still want a different QB, but if he does well, then I'm cool with it. Very colorful offense, though. Lots of blues, or I mean, a few blues, silvers, golds, reds, one brown, I guess, or bronze. So hopefully we can develop with all these dev traits. We'll see. And then the defense, again, very colorful. <laughs> Not as colorful, mostly blue and silver, but this is the starting lineup we're gonna go with on defense. We're just trying to start like the most players with dev traits, I guess. <laughs> so hopefully we can get more pressure and picks on defense, because it was terrible last year. But now, let's get to the midseason point of year three, and we will see how the team can do. Okay, well, we're doing much better this year at four and three. Now, our defense still sucks, but our offense is very good. We're putting up 28.2 points per game. Our defense is still ass, though. I wonder if the Bucks playbook is the answer. I mean, last year, I checked the best defense in the NFL, and it was the Bucks. so I don't know. Maybe not, because they're one in five or whatever that said. The Giants aren't allowing many points, but they have five sacks, and they've only played six games. I guess we'll just reassess after the year. The Cardinals are doing well. They've played, I think they have the lowest points allowed for a team that's played seven games. I don't know. I feel like I've used their defense before and it was awful, <laughs> but maybe we could try it. I mean, they are five and two. God, I don't know. We'll see. But you know, no real reason to change it now. We're doing well as a whole, but we have some re-signings to make. I don't know who's going to be here. Oh, Kyle Pitts. Okay. I definitely want him back. Desmond Ritter. How's he doing? Oh, really, really well. Okay. I'm going to re-sign. Uh, we'll hope he becomes more interested at the end of the year, actually, but Kyle Pitts I want back five years, 75 mil. I mean, Ritter's probably going to be a little more expensive at the end of the year. Mm, he's not that expensive right now. We'll try five years, 46 mil, and he doesn't take it. Okay. Well, again, we'll just see what happens at the end of the year. Um, Same with Khalil Mack. He's going to regress. He might honestly retire, but we'll probably bring him back, assuming he does well, if he doesn't retire. But that's all there is for us to do, so let's get to the end of year number three, and maybe we can make the playoffs for for the first time in this rebuild. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number three, and if you've seen one of my videos before, y'all know why we're here. If you haven't already, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Again, if and only if we hit 1,500 likes, I'll do another one of these. So if you wanna see it, just be sure to drop a like. It'll let me know y'all enjoy it, and it'll let me know to do another destroying the team rebuild, because these are kinda fun, low key. And again, subscribe for more, because if you like Madden Rebuilds, you're definitely in the right place, and it'll make you an OG of the channel. As y'all know, ooh, Douglas has superstar dev. But in year number three of the rebuild, if you couldn't guess already, we made the playoffs going 10 and seven. And really our whole division was super strong. The Chargers and Chiefs both went 12 and five. The Raiders sucked, but, well, that's weird because normally they're really broken in this game, but they did suck this year. But let's check out our season stats super quick. Okay, this is the Desmond Ritter I'm used to seeing in Madden franchise, 4,200 yards, 38 touchdowns, 14 picks, 68% completion percentage. He was a stud for sure. Damian Harris wasn't like crazy, but 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, only four yards per carry. That's not great, but the yards are good in the touchdowns. Receiving 1,300 yards and 20 touchdowns for Chris Godwin, 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns for Kyle Pitts, 800 yards for Curtis, and then only 700 yards for Gabe Davis. Sacks allowed, it was really good overall. I mean, that's only 20. 27 sacks allowed throughout the year. That's not bad at all. 10 from Jonah Williams wasn't great though, but the rest of the line was good. And then on defense, Nate Woodbury led the team with 117 tackles. Marcus Harvin just one behind him. Tackles for, for loss, 12 for Wilkins and Bo, or Bowie, 10 for Harris and sacks. 11 for Khalil Mack led the team. Six for Keith Bowie as a rookie. He was good. He might be up there for defensive rookie of the year. Romeo Douglas with five and a half, four and a half for Don Harris, and only four for Christian Wilkins. 
games. That's kind of surprising, low key, because he was so good last year. And interceptions, three for Tyler Ingles, two for JL Skinner, and then one for a few players, which JL is, so, that's a weird name in general, JL Skinner. It's also weird he went from one blue and orange Broncos team to the other, you know, went to Boise State, got drafted by the Denver Broncos. I don't know, just interesting. I guess Brett Rippon did too, whatever. Oh God, <laughs> MVP goes to Dak Prescott. I might just start like removing him from my franchises. I mean, like, I... I'm a Dak believer in real life. I currently think he's overhated. He's not an MVP guy, though. He he just ain't... He, he's not that guy, pal, to bring back, like, a four-year-old meme or whenever that's from. I don't know. He's, like, fine. He's good. Not an MVP. But Desmond Ritter, also probably not an MVP, was up there at number eight, but at least that's not number one. I'm surprised he wasn't higher, though. What the hell did Dak Prescott do? Do I want to know? Did he throw, like, over 50 touchdowns or something? No, just threw seven less picks. He really wasn't that much better than... Than Desmond Ritter. Was it just like a really tight race for the top? Oh yeah, it looks like it was. Low-key, stats-wise, Justin Herbert maybe should have been MVP. I mean, he did throw four more picks, but three more touchdowns, 2% better completion percentage, all in like 18 less attempts, only 90 less yards. I don't know. Herbert was low-key better. Also, Ritter should have been higher on the list. Baker Mayfield on the Raiders did well. <laughs> all right. But anyways, Offensive Player of the Year goes to Chris Godwin. We'll take that. I mean, he already has X-Factor, but it should be good X P. Defensive player of the year, damn it, goes to Aaron Donald, someone I wanted, and Hassan Reddick up there, of course, and Zadarius Smith up there, cool, no Broncos, offensive rookie of the year goes to Junior White for the Steelers, and defensive rookie of the year goes to Dexter Roberts for the Colts, Keith Bowie at number three, Romeo Douglas at five, I thought we would have a chance at that, but we didn't, I mean, we had a chance, but we didn't win it, but we have some scenarios here heading into the playoffs, and I don't know if we're gonna have a chance in this game, we have a hot opponent though. Shout out Bobby Schmurda. We will go be confident though. Y'all know me. Plus 10 like everything for both teams as I always say with that one. And we have a one last hurrah probably for Khalil Mack if I had to guess. I think he's like the oldest guy on our team. I don't know who the hell else it would be unless like Desmond Ritter is retiring early. I don't know if it wants to load. Oh god I saw Desmond Ritter and I thought it was him for a second but no it's about Khalil Mack. That's a really accurate face scan for Desmond Ritter I feel like. That's like exactly what he looks like. That's interesting. <laughs> some of theirs are pretty good, but some of them not so much. But we have a first of many scenario, our first playoff game. We will go play it cool, y'all know me. And now let's see if we can take down the Bengals. I don't know if we deserve to. They definitely have a better team. They're an 85, we are an 83. So I mean, we're close, but they have the home game. They have the better team. They should win this game, but you never know. I guess we have a chance. Okay, no, we lose. Um, <laughs> 27 to 24 is the final score. At least it was close, but yeah, that's definitely fair. So now, well, we'll take our sweet, juicy staff points, even though we lost five staff points. You love to see it. But now let's get into the off season, heading into finally the, or finally, no, probably the last year of the rebuild. All right, we have a California Super Bowl here. The 49ers beat the Chargers. The 49ers definitely have not been looking great in real life recently, but I guess neither of the Chargers. So I don't know. <laughs> but the 49ers do win it 31 to 21 in Super Bowl 60. And now we we of course have, I guess, a couple players to re-sign in free agency. I definitely want Desmond Ritter back. He's gonna be hard to get back, but eh, he's not very expensive. We'll go five years, 67 mil, that's it, and he does re-sign. And then Khalil Mack I want back, one year, 11 mil, he re-signs too, so now we should be able to head into free agency with a decent amount of money. I guess I'll re-sign Martin Morris, sure, and Kaimi Fairbairn. Eh, I wanna see if Matt Gay's there. If Matt Gay's there, I'll definitely go with him, because I'm immature and it's a funny name, what can I say? But now, let's get into free agency. Can't wait for it to be empty. Okay, no, definitely not. Um, there are some good players here, but we don't have the most money in the world, surprisingly. I mean, I guess we're paying a lot of high draft picks, but uh, there are definitely some players I want here. Let's see if we can free up a little bit of money with restructures and all that. Okay, well, here are the players we're going for in free agency. Unfortunately, we can't get Micah Parsons, which does suck, but you know, it is what it is. 
is he had like a five bar offer. I mean, you just can't compete with that unless they are interested, which I guess makes sense for sure. But I feel like with enough money, they would be interested. <laughs> if we were offering him like 60 mil a year, I'm sure he would be interested, but I don't know. We're going for Ronnie Stanley, Tyler Lockett, and Jabril Peppers though. Three upgrades. I mean, we might as well spend as much money as we can. It is the last year and I might work on a trade. We'll see, but we will see if we can get these three here. Three older-ish players. I mean, all at least 30, but still good. So let's see if we can sign them. Ooh, and Jabril Peppers doesn't sign. But we do get Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Lockett. That kind of sucks though. Um, I mean, we'll go player friendly. We'll probably have to go very player friendly though. And still, I don't think he's going to sign because if he was going to sign, he probably would have taken our offer there. So that's tough. I guess we'll go for Eddie Jackson too. <laughs> eh, that's not much of an upgrade. We could get Razul Douglas and play him at safety or something. <laughs> that would work. So let's see if we can get these two, Razul Douglas or Jabril Peppers. And they both sign and we get Razul Douglas, but not Jabril Peppers, as I expected. So now let's get to the draft and I might actually have a trade before then, but we'll see. Okay, I feel like I always trade for Buda Baker. We're trading Jonah Williams in a second round pick for him. We got Ronnie Stanley, so we don't need Jonah Williams anymore. I feel like we always end up needing a safety though. I just can never get a good one. They don't really develop well through the draft. It's hard to find one with a good dev trait. And usually like really good ones don't hit free agency. I guess Jamal Adams did last year. He was like a 90 superstar, but we couldn't really sign him. I don't know. I just feel like we always end up needing one, but we do get Buda Baker, so we'll take it. And now let's get to the draft. You know what? Actually, what are we gonna draft? I mean, we could draft a D lineman, but our D lineman last year played well. I guess we could do that. Or maybe a pass rusher, but I feel like we might work on some more trades here. This is just the trading special. Yeah, let me work on a couple more. Okay, well, we're gonna be trading the seventh overall pick for TJ Watt, a fourth and a fifth. You know, we need pass rush, so... I mean, it's been, like, good, but I want it to be great, you know? So hopefully the duo of Khalil Mack and TJ Watt can be good. We'll see. And hopefully Christian Wilkins can do better again next year, but it might not matter how he does anyways, because we are gonna be trading our other first round pick. We still have one more actually, but we're trading one for Aaron Donald in a third round pick. This has just devolved into chaos. My last three rebuilds have just been chaos. This is definitely no exception. So now our front seven, <laughs> you know, no biggie, Aaron Donald, Christian Wilkins, TJ Watt, Khalil Mack, nothing crazy, <laughs> no big deal. We're still somehow only an 85 overall defense. I guess, uh, I guess that makes sense. I don't know. I feel like it should be a higher overall, but we might honestly work on one more trade. I guess we'll see. Cause again, we just don't really need first round picks. Again, I should reiterate, not a realistic rebuild, clearly. So we're just doing whatever at this point. And here, last trade we're gonna make, we're gonna trade Taj Gore or whatever and a first round pick for Trayvon Diggs. So now our defense has no excuse to be bad, I guess. But I don't know, I might just skip the draft, honestly. I don't know if we're gonna find anyone worth taking. If we do, I'll show it, but I might just see y'all for the start of your number four. We'll see. Okay, well, like, I took a couple players. They look okay. Keenan Kerr, a D lineman, I thought he would be a lot better of an, of an overall. He was like all A's and B's, and he's only a 72 overall. And then Chris Johnson, not the running back. He looks pretty good. His power's terrible, but he's a 74 overall with hidden, so maybe he's good in the CPU. Picked a decent backup QB, a 70 overall, so we'll, we'll take it, I guess. Ooh, there were some good players in this class, but guess what? We didn't have a first round pick anymore, so couldn't take one if we wanted to. Oh, this guy's X Factor too. what the fuck? Well, he would have been nice to have, but that sucks, I guess. Okay, here we're gonna trade Kyrie Alford in a fourth round pick for Tyler Linderbaum and a couple extra picks. We were gonna cut Kyrie Alford because he, he was like our fucking seventh pass rusher. So we're getting value for him in the form of a new center, I guess, even though Steve Avila's been good. But I guess if we can upgrade, we can upgrade and we'll take it. But here's a look at the team heading into year four of the rebuild. The final year, of course. And I mean, this is a really good team. We're up to an 87 overall, which isn't like the best I've ever had, but we don't have a super high overall QB, to be fair. We just have one that plays well, so that's 
I guess, part of it. But, I mean, this offense is crazy. Kyle Pitts, Chris Godwin, Tyler Lockett, Gabe Davis. The O-line is looking really good. I mean, we have two superstar tackles and, like, an interior that plays well. If Tyler Linderbaum sucks at the midseason, we could also put, like, Steve Avila back in because he's been really good. And then the defense <laughs> is something else we have. Christian Wilkins, Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, TJ Watt, Trayvon Diggs, Buda Baker. I mean, it's just crazy. I don't know how this team is only an 87 overall. It feels broken, but it should develop throughout the year because even though we have a lot of veterans now, we still have a few younger players for sure, like our O-line, like Kyle Pitts. Our middle linebackers are still young. We have Harris. Our cornerback group is still young, other than Diggs. But anyways, with that, I guess we're ready to get to the end of the year and we will see how this team can do. Can't wait to go eight and nine and miss the playoffs. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number four. And once again, y'all know why we're here. If you made it all the way here and you haven't liked and subscribed already, what are you doing? Be sure to do both of those. They help out the channel and it'll help you see more of my videos, obviously, because all I do is post bangers like this. All my videos are <laughs> rebuilds, as y'all know. But the team is looking very, very good at the end of year four. Really, we don't have many weaknesses to this roster at all. I guess you can maybe consider middle linebacker weakness, but they're playing up to an 84 and an 81 overall. That's not bad at all. In the interior line, but they play well usually. QB, Desmond Ritter's been good. But in year number four, we finished 12 and five, once again, making the playoffs. Now, maybe we should have been better, but I'm not gonna complain. This could have easily gone way worse. But where did we rank in the NFL at an 88 overall? This is kind of lagging. But the Chiefs and the Colts have an 86, and I think those are the two closest teams in overall to us. So yeah, I think we should have been better than 12 and five, but it is what it is, I guess. But let's check out the team stats super quick. Desmond Ritter looks like he did very well. 4,200 yards, 36 touchdowns, seven picks, 70 completion percentage. Damian Harris wasn't super good though. I was gonna say he might've been a weakness, only 3.9 yards per carry, but we pass more often anyway, so who cares? Chris Godwin, almost 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns. Outside of him though, not much. And blocking was definitely good. We'll take that. On defense, oh good lord, okay. Marcus Harvin led the team with 138 tackles, 132 for Nate Woodbury, tackles for loss, 18 for Mac, 16 for Donald, 13 for Don Harris, and sacks, 22 for TJ Watt, 15 and a half for Aaron Donald, 13 for Khalil Mack, seven and a half for Christian Wilkins. Not much outside of that, but that might be the most sacks I've ever had in a season of a rebuild. That's insane. And interceptions, three for Buda Baker, two for Nate Woodbury, and one for quite a few players. So it looks like our trades definitely paid off. Our offense wasn't that good though. Neither was our, with an 88 overall team, we were 19th in offensive yards and 22nd in defensive yards. That makes sense. I mean, at least we scored and didn't allow many points, but I guess we didn't score that many points per game on offense. 23.9 is good. Huh, okay. <laughs> but MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes here. Desmond Ritter at number three. This is an interesting list. We have Baker Mayfield on the Raiders, Geno Smith on the Seahawks. Ugh. Offensive player of the year goes to Chris Godwin. We'll take that. Defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt, obviously. Aaron Donald at four, Khalil Mack at five. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Nolan Tucker of the Patriots, and defensive rookie of the year goes to Javier Benedict. That's a goofy ass name for the Bengals. But of course, in the playoffs, we're going to be taking on the 10 and 7 New York Jets. We have a one last hurrah scenario. Of course, for Khalil Mack again, he didn't retire last year though, so <laughs> probably won't this year either. I mean, maybe he just will retire, but if you don't click through with those one last hurrah scenarios, they don't retire unless they just like naturally retire after the year. But anyways, let's simulate this game and see if we can somehow get a win in the playoffs. It would be our first so far, despite having a really good team. Okay, we absolutely smoke the Jets, which is fair. 38 to nothing. <laughs> but we of course have a recap for the one last hurrah. We'll take that. It should give us more like everything or more morale at least. We'll take that, of course. And we have some upgrades here. Ooh, Kyle Pitts, now up to a 95 overall. And we're gonna be taking on our division rival, the LA Chargers in the playoffs here. So let's simulate it out and let's see if we can get a win. Probably not. Okay, we do. I just need to be pessimistic every time. We win 28 to 14 over the Chargers and we have another recap for the one last hurrah. Should be more morale. I mean, I don't even know how much our morale can go up anymore, but we'll 
we'll take it. If it wants to load, of course. So plus 10 more morale, we'll take it. And we are going to be taking on the team that took us out last year in the Cincinnati Bengals. We have an upgrade for Christian Wilkins here and then a few depth players. We'll take it. And let's see if we can beat a worse overall team in the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, probably not. Okay, we do. 35 to 14. And that'll give us 10 more morale. That home? That's not Desmond Ritter. Why are his numbers overlapping? This game has so many... Oh, wait, that's supposed to be Khalil Mack. All right, that's cool. This game is well made, by the way. But we do get plus 10 more morale before we jump into the Super Bowl. And in the Super Bowl, we are going to be taking on the monster we created in the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know if they still have Russell Wilson, but probably? Ooh, Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter went up to X Factor. Love to see that. Still only the 20th best QB in the league, though, playing like a top five guy. But yeah, the Falcons do, do still have Russell Wilson. They also have Sam Darnold and Jacoby Brissett. That's interesting. They have Bijan at a 99, Lindstrom playing up to a 98. I mean, they have a good team, but we are six overall better than them. We are screwed. We are not going to win this game. I mean, I've been pessimistic. It's been working, so I'll do it again, but we, we legitimately deserve to win this game. We are much better than them, but we have a final thing for the one last hurrah. It'll just max out the morale, I'm pretty sure. It's probably all already maxed out, though. Oh, it just says that he'll retire. Oh, okay, whatever. It might have maxed it out last week, and I just didn't see. I don't know. And then we have a Super Bowl media day here. This is everything. I mean, this is the last game. Plus 10 staff points. You love to see it. But now, can we win the destroyed Broncos, now rebuilt into the best team in the NFL? Can we win them a Super Bowl? We lose <laughs> to a six overall worst team, 22 to 21 in a close game. The, once again, very well made game. I love it. We're going to pretend we won that Super Bowl because we were the best team in the NFL by two overall and much, much, much better than them. Madden's simulation is certainly a thing. It is it is something. But again, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. All that good stuff. And let me know what team I should do next for this. What team I should destroy next. But with that, I'll see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.